Hey fellas, this is Vince Miller. So glad you're joining us today. Today we're going to be looking at the topic of six attributes of spiritual friendships. Now before we dive in, I want to encourage you right now, hit that subscribe button below so you can get notified when new videos come out in this series. And I believe you want to get notified so that you don't miss out. Also, secondly, as always, head over to my website today. That is beresolute.org. Be resolute.org sign up for that daily devotional subscribe literally right now don't miss out it's a great way for you to get into god's word on a regular basis with me as i navigate through the bible and i promise you every devotional is always short sweet to the point and will help you grow in your faith and in your relationship with god but with that let's dive into our message for today six attributes of spiritual friendship So just for a second, consider what do you want in a friend or a spiritual relationship? And then just sit down and consider it and then make a list and see what you come up with. I bet you'd get a pretty good list. Now, most of the time, your mind might immediately think about all the things you've experienced in friendship that you don't want in a friend, and then you'll end up listing the opposing characteristic which is exactly what I did. <laughs> I just thought immediately about all the failed relationships in my past and the wounds that they left, and I listed exactly the opposite. In fact, I listed words like trustworthy, encouraging, loving, faithful, and I would assume that you have a similar list. But next, my mind began to think, well, if these are attributes that I'm looking in friends, what kind of friend am I? And then I reread my list and I was humbled by it. <laughs> so today let's do this. Let's consult the Bible and see what it says about spiritual friendships. Here are the six attributes of great spiritual friendships, or we might say six things that just great friends do, right? <laughs> First, number one, friends share a spiritual mission. Spiritual friends just share a spiritual mission. Here it is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5, where Paul says this, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard about your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. I hope here you hear the connection spiritually that Paul has with these people in Colossae. You know, it's pretty powerful, right? It's on mission. And I've had a couple of great moments in my life where I have seen men come together around a single mission. And it's wonderful, and it's powerful, and it's exciting. And here Paul is talking about the spiritual alignment with these spiritual friends that share a spiritual mission together, one of hope right? Nothing could be more powerful and more sovereign than a spiritual will behind a common spiritual hope. This is something that I believe all friends need. They need this spiritual commonality. They need to be on mission with each other. And we need men that we share a mission with too. And it's not just a shared hope around things that revolve around like our career or work or our recreation. We actually long for farther reaching purpose and mission. I truly believe this. And a purpose that will actually outlast the time that we share here. And this requires spiritual friendships sharing a spiritual mission. Number two, we look for friends that can be trusted. Friends that can be trusted. Here's a proverb. Proverb 11, verse 13. You'll love it. Whoever goes about slandering reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing covered. Now, undoubtedly, trust is a key attribute of a great friend. We need brothers that we can trust. Men with whom we can safely confide. Men who know us at the deepest level and still love us and accept us and trust us. 
Without this agreement of trust, we will distance ourselves from friends, right? And many a man that I know has been wounded by a broken bond of trust between one man and another, or between one friend and another. Therefore, we become prone to trust less in future relationships because of this brokenness. Now, while this does happen in our life from time to time, we gotta learn to push past the pain of previous hurts that have become now hang-ups for us and forge new relationships built on agreements of trust. And we must try and try again to build these relationships and learn to trust by actually being the first to do it. Number three, third attribute. Friends see and meet needs. Friends see and meet needs. Here's 1 John 3, 17, classic verse. It reads this way, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Ouch. <laughs> this seems too simple to note, but it's got to be said, we need friends to see a need and meet it. That's what we want. We need friends who see a need and meet it. When friends only think about themselves and concern themselves with themselves, right, we're prone to back away. We will. Sometimes we have very few friends, mostly sometimes because we've maybe been a poor friend. And to break the cycle, we need to take that first step by being, well, less self-interested. And then find another friend who is also less self-interested. <laughs> Thus what you get are two men, two friends, who genuinely care about each other and not just themselves. Men who take the time to care for one another, like John talks about in this verse, love one another. Number four, friends stand with us. That's what they do. Friends stand with us. Take a look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. It reads this way. Paul says, Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I am coming to see you or I'm absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm, standing firm in one spirit and with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. You know, this is one of those attributes that is a must we need friends that help us to like stand firm. And we cannot do this alone. When the world attacks and when we're in need and when we're sick or hurting and when our world is coming undone, it's in these moments that we need others to lean on who will help us to take a stand and help us to keep on standing. Without spiritual friendship striving side by side, you will fall and so will I. Number five, fifth attribute, Friends serve each other. They serve each other. I love these words. These are straight from the mouth of Jesus himself. John 13, verses 14 through 15, read this way. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet, for I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. This, of course, is in those final moments of Jesus' life. Jesus does something completely unexpected in this moment. He, he washes everyone's feet, which is something that only the lowest and most humble of people would do, the servant. But he did it, he served. And I love this about Jesus. He was a great friend because he was willing to be a servant. He was never unwilling, even as the king and the creator and the Lord of all things, and he even taught us how to serve <laughs> as he was doing it. Great friends serve, and as they do, they model it. Sixth, and finally, friends exhort and restore appropriately. They exhort and restore appropriately. Here is Galatians 6, verse 1. It reads this way, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness Keep watch on yourself, though, lest you too be tempted. <laughs> Great friends do this, by the way. They exhort. But it's not just that they do it, but it's how they do it. Paul says they do it with a spirit of gentleness here. They know how to approach their friend and how to restore them spiritually. And this is never easy, for we can sometimes tend to either be too soft or ignore the issues that we see altogether 
and then be too hard in our approach as well. Friends are characterized here by their approach. They never ignore and they never go in for the kill. <laughs> you know, as I consider this, this list of six, I think almost immediately that I don't live up to this. While this might be the utopian characteristics or attributes of a friend, and I may never live up to it, there are definitely ways I can always be a better friend. I can break the cycle and be a better friend by developing even just one of these characteristics in a present friendship. Most of us would say that, that Jesus himself was a friend of sinners, the best friend. And since he calls us to do the same daily, we can address the friend that we are and be better friends to those around us. Well, fellas, I love you. Go out there today, build a friendship, be a better friend. And I'll see you right back here next time. Until then, live all in for him who lived all in for you.